50s from Dan Housko and Will Gidman brought Gloucestershire right back into their LV County Championship game in Leicester after Wayne White had taken three wickets in an over to put the home side in control. Day three began with Leicestershire on 220 for five, trailing by only 14 runs, but they started badly with White nudging a short ball from James Fuller to short leg. Fuller bowled a superb spell and in his next over, he also collected the wicket of Jigger Nake, who pulled him to Benny Howell. All eyes at the start of the day have been on Shiv Thakur to see if he could turn his 68 runs into 100. The answer to that was no. On 73, he edged the fantastic Fuller behind. So Leicestershire now had a lead of only two, but were eight men down. But they now pulled ahead through the slightly unlikely liaison of Claude Henderson and Nathan Buck, who added 37 runs for the ninth wicket, Buck making 25 of them. His career best was only three runs away when he was LBW to Liam Norwell at 273 for nine. Henderson now put back to ball to frustrate the Gloucestershire bowlers further. He smashed Norwell over long on for a maximum on his way to 34. He then gave Fuller a fourth wicket in a very profitable session for him. Howell the catcher as Leicestershire were dismissed for 295 for a first innings lead of 61. That kind of lead can be an awkward one for the side batting third. Ed Cowan and Howell set off in trying to knock that off. With Glamorgan certain to win their last game, this match now was one which had taken on extra meaning. The losers would be collecting the wooden spoon. White made the breakthrough as Cowan's attempted cut ended in the wicketkeeper's gloves. The Australian departed for 16. Housego then joined Howell and the two H's took their side into the lead with a partnership of 40 for the second wicket. So there was little to choose between the two sides when Henderson bowled Howell behind his legs for 35 to effectively leave Gloucestershire on 18 for two. With the ball starting to turn, the visitors knew that they probably wouldn't need to set a huge score. But Alex Gidman and Housego got their heads down to supply a very valuable partnership which just put their side at ease once more. This game between two well-matched teams was ebbing and flowing. Well, it was until White started his eighth over with the unremarkable figures of one for 30. With his first ball, he had Gidman caught down the leg side for two. Then, would you believe, he repeated that with the dismissal of Hamish Marshall three balls later. He was on course to get the nickname of the Leicester Strangler, but then next ball he got a more conventional catch behind the wicket. Three wickets in five balls had now seen Gloucestershire slump to 136 for five. That was effectively 75 for five, and it was the home side who were now on top. But again, the game started to turn once Will Gidman came to the crease to join Housego, who stood in amazement to watch those wickets tumble from the non-striker's end. The former Middlesex man went to his patient half-century, a very valuable one. That single took him there off 105 balls, from which he'd only struck three fours. Gidman's innings was completely different. He negated the spin into the rough outside the off-stump policy by bringing out the reverse sweep on a number of occasions. A shot he played extremely well as he raced through the numbers, dominating the scoring. Indeed, a well-timed cut shot took into his 50 from only 49 balls. 40 of those runs had come in boundaries. Just when Leicestershire had had the ball by its horns, Gidman had produced a red rag. This pair put on 77 to take the lead past 150, but then Leicestershire took four wickets in the last 10 overs to turn the game again. Housego on 62, Ed Matthew Hoggard behind. Jack Taylor sliced a drive off the same bowler and was held at third man. Gidman, having eased to a season's best 72, was well stumped as Ned Eckersley claimed his sixth wicket of the innings from behind the stumps. And then Fuller was LBW on the sweep to Henderson to leave Gloucestershire on 254 for nine. And that's where they'll start the final day of the season with a lead of 193, which is not a bad one on a pitch which is offering the bowlers something, although Gloucestershire don't have an experienced spinner in their ranks. It should be an interesting last day.